The topic today is the secrets to overcoming negative dependency. The secrets to overcoming negative dependency. Last week, I had a class called uh, The Declaration of Interdependence. We talked about the manner in which it's natural to have a dependence and the consequences of that. But today, we want to focus on negative dependency and how to overcome them. And I'm defining negative dependency as a dependence on resources comprised of substances, people, patterns of thinking, and behavior, which are detrimental to our well-being physically, emotionally, spiritually, and socially. So it's a pattern of thinking and behavior which are detrimental to our well-being psychologically, spiritually, and socially. That is negative dependencies. In terms of the physical, we'll be talking about substance abuse or dependent on, on unhealthy substances like too much sugar or too much salt or trans fats. Uh, socially, uh, we'll be talking in terms of, you know, and politically, we'll be talking about dependence on foreign oil. Uh, emotionally, we'll be talking on dependence on anger and revenge to release hurt feelings. Uh, we're going to be talking about also uh, how we become overly dependent on the mind as opposed to also being dependent on our hearts. So we're going to go into the causes and the cures, the secrets to overcoming negative dependency. Now, let's take a look at the dependence on physical substances. Let's say it could be methamphetamines, it could be uh, alcohol, it could be legal or illegal. We have also people having a dependency on prescription drugs, codeine, Vicodin. They, people go shopping from doctor to doctor to get a prescription so they can get their fix. They get dependent. Maybe initially they needed it because they were in a car accident. They needed some pain alleviation. They took it, but then it ended up being a dependency. And it leads to a tremendous expense in terms of dependency. And also then a person, after they get overly dependent, they don't have it, they become even feel worse. People are dependent on tobacco, which is highly detrimental. We know it leads to more heart attacks. <laughs> cancer, strokes. But there's a tremendous dependency on salt that flavors the food. And over half the people who are hypertensive, it'll raise their blood pressure. Or half the people have uh, sensitivity to sodium, whether it's in sodium chloride or sodium uh, in any form. Now, why do people become dependent on this? Typically, they feel better on it than they do off of it. There's a void in our lives, people, and this is a way to cope with that, where they, they don't feel the isolation as much. Uh, you have people who, who won't even get together unless they're smoking a cigarette or having a drink or lighting up a joint because they feel that they're more comfortable socially. They feel without it because of perhaps some self-esteem issues. Feel, I don't feel the best will come out of me, but I need this and in order to be with you, in order to express myself to you. There are people who won't say I love you unless they've had a few drinks. Or if they have an issue with you, they need a few drinks to loosen up and be themselves and laugh. So people then have that dependency to, for self-expression. So let's look at that one facet to begin with. So the secret to overcoming that you see, people will use alcohol and they say, well, we were drinking together and that's why I told you I like you or I love you or I'm upset at something you did. It's the alcohol talking. Well, we, we're, we can talk because it's okay to talk that way when you're drinking. So to the extent that people use illicit and legal substances for self-expression where they can be themselves, to the extent that's the case, we have what I call the social revolution of dialogue, which is the cure. And the basic premise is you have the right to be who you really are. You have that right. It's your God-given right. Just like you have the God-given right to the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness, you have the right to be who you really are as long as the expression of your true self is done in a respectfully real manner. That is with kindness, wisdom, and respect of boundaries. And so the logo of the social revolution of dialogue is respectfully real. Respectfully real. Now, as people come to understand respectfully real communication, 
understand, we come to understand that it's a way to communicate that builds a connection or a bridge as opposed to a wall or a barrier. 